Here we go. Good evening. Good to see you. Man, it's good to be back in Texas. I love Texas. I love it. And uh, I just, but I, I don't always come to Texas, but I hope to come here more often. And uh, I love Troy. Man, I have really just grown to love this guy. And if he's any kind of representation of you guys in any way, we're friends. We are friends. We're family. And so I'm just pumped to be here. You know, I call Troy the most interesting man in the world. And I, every time I'm, 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 I feel like, where in the world is Troy? You know, you, you get those little text messages or even, I get little updates as far as where he's at right now. And it's always somewhere I want to be. And so it's always amazing. And uh, so, man, what a blessing, a privilege to sit under some amazing leadership it's a real honor to be here and to communicate with you tonight, to inspire you. My hope and my goal is that I, I really would uh, inspire your spirit to believe because faith is what pleases God. And I, were, I really personally hope that we can accomplish something tonight, that you would walk out of this room completely changed, not because you're bad, not because you're, you're not enough, but because that God has put treasure inside of you that I've been called to unearth. And my hope is to inspire you to pull it out, to prophetically identify what it is that God has placed inside of you and begin to, to give you language for the days that are ahead. Because how many of you know that the best days are ahead? The best days that God has planned for you are ahead. And they're beginning. They're now. Today is the day of salvation. That means today you're stepping into an incredible divine moment and it's time to seize the moment and turn it into momentum. I'm going to go to Deut Deuteronomy. I'm going to read a little bit from all over the text, all over the message. And so Deuteronomy 28, I'm going to read this, and I'm going to give language to something. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I base out of there, fly around the world, get to partner with amazing people, preach the, the wonderful love of Jesus, and, and also just really my, my, my main job is to to speak prophetically into leaders, into influencers, uh, into thought leaders, and, and provoke what it is that God has put inside of them to prophesy, to declare some things. As it says, we declare things that are not as though they were. And so my goal tonight is to declare something as though it is in your life because it is. It really is. And if we can begin to see it, we, we can begin to seize it. That's the whole point. And uh, I have, uh, I've been a part of some uh, really incredible things that God has done and um, just applauding different people. My, I feel like uh, prophetically, uh, I'm like a cheerleader. I just, I, I, I cheerlead people and I go, man, you're an amazing person. God has great things in store for you. Just keep going. And then I get to, to consult them and coach them prophetically for the rest of their life. And so I hope to meet you personally, but right now we're going to share a word corporately. Okay, Deuteronomy 28. I read out of uh, this passage, and I'm going to hand select this one little section here because I want to show you something that I believe is going to be a blessing for your life. It is going to open up and unlock purpose for you, and you are going to step into divine destiny from this moment forward because there is a reason why you are here. You have a purpose, and God wants you to begin to see that purpose. Some of you in this room, you're dreamers. I'm a dreamer. I love to dream. I believe dreams are one of the primary ways that God speaks to us. But dreams are only good if they're fulfilled. And I hope to see that your dream would be fulfilled, that you have a life dream, maybe a dream in the night, that it becomes fulfilled and you have a purpose. You have a dream for your life. But inside of that purpose, or, or if, I could, if I could call it the context, the context of your purpose is within the framework of your design. You have a divine design. You are uniquely identified with a divine design. God made you for a purpose. He made you for a reason. And our goal is to unlock that reason, unlock that purpose, unlock that destiny, and step into it because there's a whole lot of people waiting on you to fulfill your destiny. 
There's a whole lot of people waiting on you for you to step into what it is that you have inside of you. And, and you know what's amazing to me is a lot of what's inside of you is relationally activated. It's waiting on the right relationships. When I get around Troy, I feel destiny because I feel divinely there's a, a unique relationship there and my gift becomes relationally activated. Are you hearing me? And, and, and there's something about that, that because of his breakthrough, I can break through. And because of what he's walking in, there's, there's sort of this thing, there's this overflow, there's this spillover, and I get to sit under the anointing, the outpouring, the presence of God in his life and receive glean from the grace that is on him. Do you have people like that in your life? Do you have people that you could go, man, I got to hang out with that person because they're awesome. They make me look better, right? It could be your wife. Amen. Men, right? You go, man, she makes me look good. It's like you, you get around people that make you feel good, look good. You like, I'm, we're VIP. It's, it's reality. You're a VIP. You are a very important person. Jesus had this on his life. He was VIP, and he made other people feel VIP. He didn't make other people feel less than. He actually prophetically could call out the best in them, because you have to understand this, and I want you to get this. I want you, if you can, write this down. Your lowest moment does not change God's mind about your highest potential. You have a prophetic purpose, and God wants to begin to unlock that. And my goal in this season of life is to help you see the invisible things of God, because as a seer, I see the invisible things at work in your life, and if you could see them, you could seize them. If you can see what others don't, you'll have what others won't. And God is working in the invisible world on your behalf. And there is a divine relationship, a partnership that you and I are called to, to actually step in, not just as a, as a viewer or a spectator, but actually a participant and a, and, and a co-laborer in this divine work that God is doing through your life. You are a co-laborer. And there's, there's something that I want to provoke in you, I want to call out on you, is the prophetic nature in you, the seer nature in you, that you have this prophetic nature that God has put inside of you. You're hearing the voice of God. He says, my sheep hear my voice. They'll not listen to another. I, I started hearing the voice of God, and, I, and, it, and it took me time to understand that God was speaking to me, but as time went on, I developed history with God, and now when he speaks to me, I go, that sounds like God. That's, that's how he would speak to me. I have history with God. But that, 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 that word that he is putting inside of you, how he is speaking to you right now, is proof that you have prophetic nature at work inside of you, and you're called to prophesy. You're called to do signs and wonders and miracles you're called to do things, and, and, it's, and, and it's a lifestyle of this. It's not something where you sign up for just a ministry moment or, or you know, you just go on a mission. It's an everyday occasion, and it's for every environment that you're in. We believe God at our house. So I'm going to tell you a story because this is, this is how we flow at our place. If you come over, now, if you come over my house, you're not going to know whether we're, we're uh, very spiritual or not. I'll just really warn you, okay? Because we're not the most spiritual people, but spiritual things happen at our house. Because we're less talk and more walk. Come on. Perhaps, I'm, oh man, I'm going to step on this toe. Because some of us, we settle more for ritual rather than relationship. We prefer ritual. We, we like rituals. And we, we like the, the form, but we don't know about the substance. Come on. Is God moving in your house? Is he moving in your family? Some of us, 
I believe this is going to inspire you because you might feel disqualified, like you're not spiritual enough, or you don't talk the language enough, or you don't have the verbiage. Listen, I, I, I feel like all of that stuff needs to go out the door because it's not about all of that. It's not about just saying the right thing. It's about us believing God is good and he's for me and he wants to speak to me and I'm not disqualified. It doesn't matter what bad day I'm having or how bad I feel like I'm behaving. God wants to speak to me and that's the antidote. That's the answer for my situation. And we, at our, at our house, we, we've come to this place where just we believe God for breakthroughs. And we were going through a season where where we had, we were trying to get out of our tiny, we had a, we were grateful too, but we had a tiny little condo, tiny little condo. I got two kids, a nine and a five-year-old, tiny little condo, and we're all stuffed in there, my wife and I and our kids, and, and we're all stuffed in this tiny little condo that we bought pre-marriage, and we, we are pre, not pre-marriage, excuse me, pre-babies, and and so we're, we're, we're in this little thing, and we're like, oh, we need a house. Come on, God. How many are believing for houses in this place? Come on. And if you don't, you're not believing for you don't you already have a house? Listen, raise your hand again, because you need to have extra houses for what God is about to do in your life. And some of us, were just waiting around. We're like, man, until there's an urgent need to see a breakthrough or a miracle, when God wants to bless you with more than enough, not based upon your urgent need, but more than enough. Come on. And we had been seeing breakthrough after breakthrough for other folks. There was this young guy on, at a church event, and I came up to I just had a word. I was staying with him for the weekend. They were taking good care of me, and I, I came up to him. I felt this word. I said, God's about to bless you with a house that's bigger than anything that you could think of it's bigger than all of your needs. Everything that uh, you've been, uh, you have it, it for needs, it's all going to be met. This place, you're going to have more square footage than you have need need for, and and, and it's going to come. It's going to be soon. And he's receiving this word. He's hearing this word, but he's thinking in his mind, "I don't need a house." Why is he saying this? Is he? A, if, does he not like my house because I was staying at his house? think my house is small or something? But he gets an opportunity. He starts believing the word. He says, you know what? I'm just going to put faith into this word. And he's living in a, in a, not, a not a tiny house. It's about 2,500 square feet. But he's sitting there and he's believing God and he's going, come on, God. If this is a right on word, if this is a prophetic word for me, I'm going to believe him and I'm going to just put my faith to it. So he starts believing the word and one of his friends comes to him and says, hey, you know, I just found this house that's not for sale yet, but it's about to go on the market, but they want to see if anyone wants to buy it before it goes on the market, and they're just giving this thing away. And he says, oh, wow, we should go see it. So they walk in, they're like, wow, we love this. How much is it going to be? And he realizes it's only going to be something like 11 more dollars on his payments each month for 7,500 square feet. He's like, I'll take it. <laughs> so now as a prophetic person who's yet to see the breakthrough, have you ever prayed for the sick and you're sick? You're like, you're sick. You're like snotty nose sick, you know. You're like laying hands, you know. You're like, <clears throat> be healed. <laughs> People are like, you're like, People are like, can you pray for my back? And you're like, yes. <laughs> you're praying for someone's back while your back is like oh, about to give out. Because sometimes you're believing for a breakthrough that you've actually partnered with God for others to receive already. But can you have faith for God to bless you? Can you have faith for God to bless? It's easy to believe, a, oh, man, they're amazing. You know, I'm going to bless them. Oh, or you have pity on them, right? You're like, oh, you poor thing. God's got to bless you. You're miserable. <laughs> right? And, and you're, you're okay with all of the things that you would not be okay with yourself about. 
And the things that you think qualify them, if you were to take you and put you in that situation, you, would, you might think you're disqualified. All of those excuses had, have to go out the door because God wants to pour out blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon you. And so I'm at my house, and, and the Lord starts showing me something, and he goes, you, you, you haven't called the house. You haven't called the house that you need. You need a house. You have, we've been for a year just like wrestling like with the market and, just, and, and not, not even calling it, just going, oh, man, we really need a house. We really need a house. We're like wrestling, striving in our own strength. And so I sit there with my wife, my kids, and I go, you know what? I feel like we need to together call the house. And so we're sitting around in our little tiny place, and, 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 and I go, in the name of Jesus, I call that house right now. The house that we're to have that is for us, been reserved for us. I thank you, God, that there's going to be a house, and we're going to step into that place. And as I'm doing this, I see out of the corner of my eye an angel of God come down in the place we're in. And I look, and, I, and I, I'm always like amazed when they, sh but I go, kids, there's an angel here. Now, it's amazing what happens when you tell your kids there's an angel. Because they're not like, oh, well, you know, I got to see it to believe it, you know. They don't, they don't need, they, they're not like that. Kids are just so believable, right? And that's why they inherit the kingdom. Because they believe before they see. And my kids are over there. I said, where is it? And my, 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 my daughter runs over and she's like, I see it. I see it. And she's playing in it. She's like, it's an angel. And she's like excited. And my, my son, who's five, excuse me, he goes over, and he's just five. He's a caveman. You have to understand. My son's five. He's a caveman. And he runs over, and he goes, where is he? And I go, he's right there, buddy. He's right there. And he, and he turns to me. He's five years old. Excuse me. And he goes, do angels fart? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> Kids, they say everything we want to say. <laughs> but we can't say it. And so we wake up the next day and, and I get a phone call. Hey. There's a house on a market down the road. You got to go check it out. We go there. I'm walking around. There's a pool in the backyard. I'm like, this is the place. But you got to wait for the nod from the wife. <laughs> Come on. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's like you just hold, you're like, you don't know whether to say no or yes. She's kind of like, and I'm like, and she goes, this is the one. And I'm like, well, take it. <laughs> what seemed like a mountain really was nothing because God wants to cause mountains to be cast into the sea, literally to crumble when you call on the name of the Lord. Now, here's, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to prophesy over you. I've got a few minutes here to prophesy over you because I want to speak this out over you and give you inspiration for the season that you're in. It says, Deuteronomy 28, 12, the Lord will open to you his good treasure. Say treasure. treasure. He will open to you his good treasure. How many love the idea of treasure? I love the idea of treasure because treasure to me is like mystery. Treasure to me is like there's something hidden that I don't know about that somebody can claim because it's just sitting there. It's not, for me, treasure is not what's in a museum. Treasure is what's at the bottom of the sea. 
Treasure is the thing that you, you find that no one else has claimed yet. It is of great value, but it's just sitting, waiting there to be found and claimed and called upon. Treasure. God wants to give you treasure. And there's hidden treasure in secret places, is what the Scripture says. And where is this secret place what is this treasure? It says, the Lord will open to you his good treasure. Say treasure. And it says that this treasure, it relabels this treasure. And it says, the heavens. The heavens. God created heaven as a place to hold his treasure. I want to propose something to you. That God created everything all at once. Do you know that he created everything all at once? The only thing that he's done in, in his creative power, again, is you and I as a new creation. Thousands of years later, after his creation, you and I are the new creation. It's the only thing he's done since the beginning of creation. He set everything in order, and because he created all things at once, there was too much of it. And he had to host it somewhere. He had to hold it somewhere. He had to put it somewhere. He had to put it in a storehouse. And he created a place, not as a place that you and I get to go to when we die. It was not created as a result of the fall. It was created before the fall, and it was called heaven. And if you think about heaven, heaven is like the cloud. Now, I have a phone. Does anybody have a phone right here? You have a phone? Hold up your phone. Some of you got pictures of your family, friends on your, on your phone, right? And, and what do you get? You get a little notification every once in a while that says to you, your phone, and you got like the upgrade. You're upgraded, all that stuff, but your phone has run out of memory. You run out of storage. What happened? You were taking too many pictures of Fluffy. <laughs> you got all these pictures of Fluffy, and you got to get rid of them. And you're like, I love Fluffy. I feel like I'm murdering Fluffy if I delete these. <laughs> you're too attached. And you're like, oh, I'm betraying his friendship. And so you don't want to delete all those pictures of Fluffy what do you do? You put them in the cloud. <laughs> so that at a future time, you can retrieve them and you can get the download. And all you have to do is call upon that picture. Come on. Come on. What if your breakthrough is in the cloud it was already created ahead of time. The situation that you're in, you have to call upon God who brings the breakthrough. He's already created the recipe for breakthrough way ahead of time. He put it in the cloud, and he's waiting for you to call upon it. His treasure, the heavens. But what is this, the heavens, and what is this treasure? It says, listen, verse 12, it says, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. To bless all the work of your hand. It's this treasure, the heavens, when he gives it to you, the way it comes upon you is the rain coming upon you and it's falling upon the work of your hands. Say hands. hands. Now, I don't know if you work with your hands. God works with his hands. When he created the heavens and the earth, everything he created with his word, but when he came to us, he created us with his hands. He spoke everything else into existence, but the finer details of who we are, he made with his hands. And he made Adam and Eve. Adam he made first. He pulled him from the ground, and Eve he pulled from the rib of Adam. And when Eve came, she was the upgrade. Come on, do you know what I'm saying? Because there's Adam, right? He's the first. He's like the, the, the beta. He's like the, the experiment. 
But here comes the final version. Man 2.0. She comes out. She's looking good. And he's like, oh, what is that? It's the new version. She's the upgrade. She's got a better processor. She's in touch. Adam's still dragging his knuckles, right? And Eve, she's smart. She talks without using words. Right now, guys, there is a secret conversation that the women are having in this room about us. And you don't even know it. You're just sitting there. You're in trouble. But he creates Adam and Eve, and, I, and, I, and, and it says this in Genesis 2. For this reason, Adam and Eve were created. It says in verse 4, it says, this is the history of Genesis 2, verse 4. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. He made them together. He made them together. And it says this, before, this was before, before what? Any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. He had not yet caused it to rain because he had not yet formed humanity to work the ground. How many know that God is smart, right? He doesn't pour out new wine into old wineskins. He's not going to pour out into something that is not going to contain it. He's not going to pour out just, just, just frivolously. He's going to pour out because there's a reason He's going to pour out because someone had worked the ground, planted the seed, and now he can call on the rain. I believe prophetically over this house, this is a season to call on the rain. There are three prescriptions, three roles, three places of significance that prophetic people have. The first one is they anoint kings. The second one, they call people back into covenant. But the third one has never been, I, I feel like I'm on a journey of discovery. It's something that we don't talk about. The third one, prophets are called to call on the rain. And I believe God right now is looking to see who has planted the seed, who has worked the ground, and who can call on the rain. I remember I used to go to rainbow gatherings, big pagan hippie festivals, 50,000 hippies out in the middle of the woods, crazy. Half them, I mean, you, you, we would go feed them, love on them, preach the gospel, tell them about Jesus' love. It was amazing, signs, wonders, and miracles. And then they would do this thing every gathering. And I looked at this, and I go, man, why is it as believers we are, are giving this up? And they would do this thing, and it was usually like day five, day six. They're all hot, sweaty, they're hippies. And they would begin to beat on their drums. They had these djembes, and they would come together, all of them, and just come together and beat on these drums and dance and beat on these drums and dance until it rained. And it would physically rain on the land. I remember one of them came to the Lord, and I, and I, and I said, hey, can you play the, the, the drum beats, you know, that you guys play there? And he goes, oh, no, I can't do that anymore. I said, why? He says, because I was taught how to do that from some of the others in the group, and they were sacred drum beats that I, was that I would use to actually cause it to rain. And I'm going, what the? Can you repeat that? 
He goes, oh yeah, there's sacred drum beats that we would beat in order to cause it to rain. And I would watch this almost as if it was like predictable every single time they had a gathering. What is it we don't know that is keeping us from living out in the fullness and we've allowed others to take what rightfully belongs to us Now, you know that I'm speaking spiritually. I'm not talking about it's going to be a mass flood at your house. Your gutters are going to overflow. I'm talking about God wants to call the rain on your life and bless you and open heaven. And as, if I could be a prophet of anything, it's not a prophet of drought, but a prophet of the rain. And you know, it says this very interesting thing about one of the two, the two witnesses at the end of the age. It says, the two witnesses will come and their primary power will be to call the rain or shut the heavens. There is a divine relationship between believers and the rain. And he wants to begin to call the rain on your life so that the work of your hands is blessed. How many feel like you've been sowing and sowing and sowing, but you haven't been reaping? Some of us, I mean, there's a place of frustration in you that you're sowing and sowing and sowing and giving and giving and giving, but you've yet to see the harvest for all that you've given. And if this harvest is indeed 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, where are all these folds? I'm looking. You should be blessed to the place where you can't contain it. There's something missing. You've worked the ground. You planted the seed. But I believe it's time for you to call on the rain. Go to 1 Kings 18. I'm going to wrap this up, and then we're going to pray. This became a realization to me. When I was with a friend, I was down in, in a place in the south, not, not this state, but another state, I won't say where, but I was down in the south and I was enjoying my time there. I love the south and uh, didn't grow up in the south, but I love the south. I, I did spend a little bit of time in, in the south as a child, but, um, but I love the culture. It just, it gets in your bones. It's just a relaxed culture. I lived in Philadelphia for a little while and, and if you're not stressed while you're resting, you're not doing it right. First Kings 17. It says in verse 1, Elisha the Tishbat of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be due no rain these years except at my word. Say, at my word. And then it says in verse 2, then the word of the Lord came to him. Does that, does that make sense to you? To me, I'm going, wait a second. Does he need, need the word of the Lord before he tells everyone that he's going to cause it to rain or stop the rain or there's going to be no rain at his word? But in verse 1, he doesn't even have a prophetic word. He's stepping out on his own initiative God has not yet spoken to him. Verse 2 is when God speaks to him. But verse 1, he knows he has permission to stop the rain or call the rain. And the rain is waiting for his word. And perhaps some of us in this room, we're waiting for a prophetic word when God has already given you permission. You're going, God... Do I, what do I do? God, can you speak to me prophetically? Am I called to be awesome? Duh. Right. Oh, God, I just, you know, like, if you, listen, sometimes I feel like prophetic words are just like God saying, I already gave you permission to do this. I do, like, I walk up to people, people walk up to me, I prophesy over them, and they're like, you're like the 14th person that's told me that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> 14. 
you're in disobedience. You need an Old Testament prophecy. But <laughs> if you are waiting and waiting and waiting, you're like two, three words in, you're, you already should be moving. You already should be acting as if you have permission. You, you don't need that many words, like, oh, God, is it your will that I pray for that person over there? I'm feeling this, but is it the Lord or is it the devil? God, is it, is it you that you're moving in me to, to minister and to help that person and, and to give? No, it's the devil. He really wants you to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. He wants you to sow generously into the poor. He wants you to volunteer your time for the food. He, I mean, look, it's not... If we're waiting so long, I think we're confused. You've already been given permission. Come on. Are you hearing me? So I'm down in, I'm down in this state, Troy. You, you can like, and I look at this guy, and I go into a vision. It's a prophetic moment. He and his wife are there. I, look at, I go into a vision, and in the vision, I see the seed they've been sowing, and the ground that they've been sowing it into, the soil that they've been sowing it into. And I'm looking at them, and I'm seeing this, and I'm going, whoa, God, that's a lot of giving. They've been giving and giving. Where, what, where's the blessing on their life? And the Lord calls me in the middle of this moment with the, where I'm seeing in a vision, and I'm right before them, and he says, they've been sowing. He speaks this to me. He says, now call the rain. And I'm like, what? Like, I got permission? He's like, yeah, you see the seed? You see the soil? See, Elijah knew he could stop the rain because they had stopped obeying God. He didn't need permission to do it. He already had it. God had already spoken in Deuteronomy 28 that if you fail to obey my words, I will cause the heavens to be like brass. I will stop up the rain for you. But if you fulfill this word that he had spoken, he will cause it to rain. He'll open the heavens, and the heavens will pour out for you. The treasure will come down. So what is he waiting for? He's wa he, he's not, he doesn't need to wait for a word from God. He's already got the word from God. So I look at this couple, and I said, I'm going to call the rain. Between July 4th and July 11th of this next year, there will be a blessing on your life that you cannot, it's going to change the state of your living, and it's going to be, a, it's going to be an increase in your life, and, and, and you're going to see it. It's going to be a blessing. That's me calling the rain. So July 4th comes around. They got this word, and they're writing down. They're like, come on, Lord, come on. This is like months later. I'm talking like six, seven months later. July 4th, Nothing. July 5th, nothing. July 6th, they get a phone call. And they're believing and pressing in. And it's a, on the other line, it's this person that says, we have a large sum of money in your name. And we need your bank account details so that we can wire it to your bank account. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a Nigerian prince. <laughs> on the Ivory Coast. Some castle locked away. It was not one of those. They were blessed. And between three and four hundred thousand dollars was wired to their bank account. At that time, they bought a house. They were blessed. They were giving away. They were, they were, they were feeling, man, this was the breakthrough. Call the rain. I go from there to another church in Tennessee, and the pastor, I'm in the back room, and he says, Jamie, I want you to know, I'm excited you're here, but we're going through a financial crunch. Now, I'm a guest minister, and that's not what I want to hear. Because I like to sleep indoors and wear clothes. So, I look at him, I'm like, okay, is it, how, how, how bad is it? You know, <laughs> and the Lord's like, call the rain. They've been sowing into this region for years. You need to call the rain. And so in the meeting, standing before everyone, I said, there's going to be a blessing that is going to come your way. In fact, I see it. You're signing on the dotted line. It's going to pay off this building. It's going to pay off your debts. You're signing on the dotted line for this right now. I get a, 
I get a, a message two months later. He said, I got to meet you because your word, it happened. Someone walked in the house and gave them a $1.5 million check. And they paid off their building to build a new building. And it was the blessing of God, the rain pouring out on them. Call the rain. What if the rain is waiting for your word? I go from there, and there's a there, there's a guy. I'm with a I'm with a couple. I'm up in up, I'm up in Maryland, and they, they 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 they're hosting me. It's just a quick little meeting, and and for, but for a couple of days they're hosting me, and they're giving me all these amazing meals, crab sandwiches, amazing stuff. And I was like feeling blessed. They gave me their master bedroom in their house. And I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. Praise God. And the man of God, the man of the house, he comes out of his room. He's praying. And he's got his Bible open, Troy. He's, he's looking at me. He goes, he goes, man, have you been blessed here? I said, yes, I have. He says, man, we're so excited that you're here. We just want to honor you. We're excited. I'm like, man, I feel like embarrassed. And then he's like, yeah, have you liked the crab sandwiches? I'm like, yes, I have. <laughs> he's like, good, I want my wife to take care of you. How about our master bedroom? You like our master bedroom? I said, yes, I have. Thank you so much. You didn't have to give it to me. And I love the electric blanket. <laughs> and he goes, oh, good. I'm so glad you like it. Hey, Jamie, I was reading in the Bible. It says if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. You know anything about that, Jamie? <laughs> I said, I got you. That night the Lord says, call the rain on his life. And so I look at him, I say, guess what? You're about to be blessed. In three weeks you'll receive a large sum of money that will give you a certification and you'll go around the world. And from there, God will bless you and your family, and you'll travel together as a family, and it will be increased on your life. Three weeks later, he gets a $30,000 grant from his work to get a certification in whatever he wants. And he goes, he secures a real estate certification, not for local real estate, but for national real estate. And now he's working on a $250 million deal in downtown Chicago. Come on, I want to call the rain on your life. Can you believe God for the rain? Stand up with me, and I want you to open your mouth, as it says in Job 29, as for the spring rain, because the rain is coming on your life. You're about to step into a time of harvest. God's going to bless the work of your hands. I prophesy over you that, so, that many of you in this room right now, you're going to step into a time of destiny, a time of purpose. You've been working in the ground. You've been sowing the seed, and the rain is coming down on your life. You're going to receive harvest. You're going to receive treasure. You're going to receive open doors and open heavens. And so I bless you. Some of you are going to acquire businesses and houses, lands that you didn't work for. Some of you are going to acquire even your the families are going to, you're going to help them find homes and God's going to bless you with multiple homes that you could host families in these places and get them back on their two feet. Some of you are going to, you, you, God's going to bless work here and find programs, programs that are going to help people get back on their two feet and find job security, people getting out of difficult situations, out of places where they have no resume. And he's going to pour out the rain on you. I want you to call on the rain. Just lift your voice and call on the rain right now. Call on the rain right now. Call on the rain. I believe this place, just as you have given 20 million pounds to over 300,000 people, that is just ridiculous. I've never heard of this. But I want to say that rain is coming down in this place over you for your generosity of spirit. And it's time to receive the harvest 
God is going to begin to open up new places. You're going to begin to see, I see new lands coming to you. I, I, I see an expansion in this house. You're going to expand to the right and to the left. I, I see bleacher seating. I see God beginning to, uh, there's going to be a place, even a place, I see it in my spirit right now, that has like a coliseum look to it. It's got, an, it's got a surrounding where people are like in a stadium, and they're coming together to worship. They're coming together to seek the face of God. They're coming together to prophesy and seek the miracles of Jesus. They're coming together, and they're bringing the poor with them. They're bringing the broken with them. They're bringing the, the needy. They're bringing the rich. That people are coming together, and they're worshiping in this place. And I see this Colosseum. Whoa. I prophesied the rain that this thing will come to you. It will be paid off in Jesus' name. Let it come. Come on. Whoa. I want to show you a video. 45-second video. Hold tight real quick. Watch this 45-second video because I want to invite you to something. God wants you to see. He wants to give you eyes to see. Dreams, visions, visitations, angelic encounters. Things that are happening in the spirit and you get to know what is going on. I want to invite you to eight weeks of transformation and helping to develop the seer nature that God has put inside of you. Come with me on this journey into the seer masterclass. Pause it right there. Go back to that screen and pause it if you can. If you can't, don't worry. But I want to invite you. We are starting on October 10th, our third round. This is going to be amazing. Our third round of the Seer Masterclass. It's an online program that I'm launching. Third round, which means we got it down. We figured it out. First two, two rounds, eight weeks of online mentoring where you receive live training, live sessions. There's some pre-recorded stuff that I actually filmed in this house. And I want to invite you to join me on that. It's going to be October 10th. That's the start date. Make the investment in yourself and your spiritual future. Go to jamiegalloway.com forward slash secrets. Sign up there and then see me at the book table. I'll be signing books. God bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's celebrate God.